the terrified gazes of a hundred alien races bored into the human as he entered the vast galactic council chamber at gunpoint, like a condemned animal about to be slaughtered. Michael Williams stood resolute, his face an unreadable mask, as he faced the accusations against humanity that they had violated galactic law by building advanced weapons that made even the mighty Saurian Empire tremble. The fate of trillions hung in the balance, for if the Council found humanity guilty, they would be erased from the stars. Michael took a slow breath, his chilling confession about to shatter the foundations of galactic peace. If humanity could not make the other races see reason, humans would be forever enslaved or annihilated. The entire future of the species rested on this one man's shoulders as he prepared to speak the words that would either save humanity or doom them to extinction. Varys's eyes bulged with disbelief at the human's shocking confession. The Saurian leader slammed his fist on the podium, his scales turning a deeper shade of crimson. You dare accuse us of being the aggressors while building weapons of mass destruction in secret? What exactly is this new weapon you speak of? Varys hissed. Michael paused, his eyes scanning the enraged faces of the council members. He gave a subtle nod to his aide, who stepped forward with a data crystal in hand. The aide passed the crystal to the Saurian guards, who eyed it suspiciously, before inserting it into the chamber's holographic display. A collective gasp echoed through the room as a stunning image materialized above the council floor. It was a warship, but not like any the Council had seen before. The vessel was colossal, its size making even the largest Saurian dreadnoughts look like mere toys in comparison. Strange weapons and sensors bristled along its hull, hinting at capabilities far beyond the Council's understanding. This, Michael said, his voice steady, is the UES Prometheus, the first in a new class of human battleships designed to engage entire fleets single-handedly, the council members stared at the hologram, a mixture of awe and fear on their faces. Michael continued his explanation, detailing the ship's advanced shielding that could withstand the firepower of a dozen Saurian warships. He spoke of its primary weapon, a massive railgun capable of launching projectiles at a significant fraction of the speed of light. That's impossible, a Krell representative muttered. No shield can withstand that kind of firepower. I assure you it is quite possible, Michael replied, his gaze unwavering, and it is only the beginning of what humanity is capable of. Varys's scales flushed an even deeper shade of red, his anger palpable. This is an outrage. The humans are warmongering, building weapons to threaten the peace of the galaxy. The Saurian leader pointed an accusing finger at Michael. You will hand over the plans for this Prometheus and its weapons immediately, or face the consequences. The Council will not hesitate to impose sanctions and take military action against your species. Michael's expression hardened, his voice taking on a steely edge. Humanity will never submit to the tyranny of this Council. Any attempt to force our hand will be met with swift and decisive action. He looked around the room making eye contact with each of the Council members. The Prometheus is only the beginning. We will not hesitate to use our full might to defend our allies and interests across the galaxy. I suggest you think carefully about your next move. The council chamber descended into chaos, with representatives from various species shouting and arguing amongst themselves. Some demanded the humans be punished, while others expressed fear at the prospect of facing such advanced technology in battle. Amidst the pandemonium, Michael calmly turned and walked out of the chamber, his point made and his resolve clear. The fate of humanity, and perhaps the entire galaxy, now hung in the balance. The council chamber erupted into a cacophony of shouting voices as Michael strode out, leaving stunned silence in his wake. Varys slammed his fist on the podium, his scales practically glowing with rage. This meeting is adjourned, he hissed through clenched teeth. I must confer with my generals immediately. Guards, clear the chamber. As the council members filed out, still arguing amongst themselves, Varys stalked off to his private shuttle. The short ride back to the Saurian homeworld felt like an eternity as he paced the length of the cabin, 
his mind racing with the implications of the human's revelation. As soon as the shuttle touched down, Varys was rushed into an armoured transport that carried him deep beneath the surface to a secret bunker complex. There, in a dimly lit war room, he found his most trusted military advisers already assembled. My lord, General Krath rumbled, his scarred face grim, we have analysed the data on this Prometheus. It is concerning. Varys slammed his fist on the table, making the holographic display flicker. I want options, General. How do we counter this new threat? Krath brought up a star map, highlighting human territory in red. Our best chance may be a preemptive strike, my lord. If we can catch their shipyards off guard, we might be able to destroy this new class of vessel before they can build more. Varys's scales flushed a deeper crimson as he considered the plan. The thought of crushing the upstart humans was tempting, but he knew such an overt act of aggression would not go unnoticed by the other council races. It could spark a galactic war that even the mighty Saurian Empire might not survive. No, he said at last, we cannot risk open war, not yet. He turned to his spymaster, a slim, hooded figure lurking in the shadows, Infiltrate the human colonies. Steal their secrets. I want to know everything about this Prometheus and the weapons they use to build it. The spymaster bowed low. As you command, my lord. On the distant human colony of New Terra, Michael stepped off his transport to a hero's welcome. Crowds of cheering humans lined the streets, waving flags and chanting his name. But even as he basked in their adulation, Michael knew his actions had put humanity on a perilous path. In a secret meeting with the colony's leadership, Michael laid out the stark reality of their situation. The Saurians will not take this lying down, he warned. We need to accelerate the Prometheus program. Build more ships and quickly. The Admiral in charge of the project nodded grimly. We've already begun construction of a dozen more vessels in hidden shipyards, but it will take time and resources we can ill afford to spare. We have no choice, Michael said. We must also seek allies among the other races. There are many who chafe under Saurian dominance. They may be willing to stand with us when the time comes. As the meeting ended, and Michael stepped out into the cool night air, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was amiss. Unbeknownst to him, on the outskirts of human space, a surprise attack was already underway. A small outpost, lightly defended, found itself under assault by a fleet of unidentified ships. As the first distress calls went out, the fragile peace that had held the galaxy together began to unravel, one thread at a time. The burning wreckage of the human outpost filled the viewscreens, a grim testament to the devastating attack. Admiral Kira Nakamura, her face etched with a mix of grief and anger, turned to face the assembled officers in the command center. What do we know about the attackers? she asked, her voice tight. Captain Salim Tariq, the outpost's commander, stepped forward. They call themselves the Ascendancy, Admiral, a fanatical group made up of members from various races. They believe that the only path to true peace and unity in the galaxy is through subjugation. Kira's eyes narrowed, and they see us as a threat! Not just us, Salim said. They're targeting anyone who stands in their way. Our advanced technology, like the Prometheus, makes us a prime target. The Admiral's fists clenched. The Ascendancy had struck without warning, catching the outpost off guard. The loss of life was staggering, and the blow to morale even worse. As if on cue, the command center's screens flickered and changed, replaced by the image of a hooded figure. His face was obscured, but his voice carried a chilling authority. People of the galaxy, he intoned, I am the prophet, leader of the Ascendancy. For too long our civilization has been fractured, divided by petty conflicts and selfish interests. The time has come for us to unite under one banner, one purpose. The prophet's voice grew harder. Those who resist will be destroyed. And to demonstrate the power of the Ascendancy, we have taken control of an ancient weapon, a legacy of a long-forgotten civilization. The image changed again, this time showing a massive space station, its scale almost incomprehensible. 
It dwarfed even the largest ships in the human and saurian fleets. This station can harness the power of stars, focusing it into a beam capable of shattering planets, and we will not hesitate to use it against any who defy us, starting with the humans and their allies. Kira's blood ran cold. If the Prophet's claims were true, the Ascendancy posed a threat greater than anything the galaxy had ever seen. The transmission ended, and the command center erupted into a frenzy of activity. Kira turned to her communications officer. Get me a line to Veris now. The Saurian leader's face appeared on the screen, his expression grim. You saw it too? he asked. Kira nodded. We have to stop them, Varys. The Ascendancy threatens us all. Varys hesitated, the bitter history between their species hanging in the air, but the gravity of the situation was undeniable. Agreed, he said at last. My forces will join yours. We must find this prophet and his weapon before it's too late. As the call ended, Kira turned to her officers. Prepare a joint task force. We're going to hunt these bastards down and end this threat once and for all. In the days that followed, human and Saurian ships worked side by side, scouring the galaxy for any trace of the Ascendancy. Michael, now a key member of the task force, found himself working closely with Varys, the two former enemies united by a common goal. But as they chased down leads and raided suspected Ascendancy bases, they began to uncover a deeper conspiracy, one that threatened to unravel the very fabric of galactic society. Whispers of hidden alliances, ancient artifacts, and forbidden knowledge swirled around them, hinting at a truth that could shake the foundations of everything they thought they knew. With each passing day the stakes grew higher, and the fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. Michael and Varys, two warriors from different worlds, knew that they would have to trust in each other and in the strength of their respective species if they were to have any hope of stopping the Ascendancy before it was too late. The combined human Saurian fleet dropped out of hyperspace on the edge of the Ascendancy's home system. The twisted wreckage of destroyed ships littered the void, a grim testament to the fanatical resistance they had already faced just to get this far. On the bridge of the UES Prometheus, Michael stared at the viewscreen, his jaw set with determination. Beside him, Varys growled softly, his claws flexing as he watched the enemy ships massing in front of them. This is it, Michael said, his voice steady. We've finally found their base and the weapon. Varys nodded, his eyes never leaving the screen. My ships are ready. We will crush these fanatics and put an end to their mad ambitions. Michael turned to his crew, his gaze sweeping over the tense faces of his officers. Signal the fleet, all ships engage the enemy. We'll punch a hole through their defences and clear a path for the ground team. As the human and Saurian ships surged forward, the Ascendancy fleet moved to intercept them. The void lit up with the flashes of energy weapons and the bright trails of missiles as the two sides clashed in a titanic battle. The Prometheus shuddered, as its shields absorbed a barrage of fire, but Michael held his ground, his eyes fixed on the enemy ships. Target their flagship, he ordered. All forward batteries, fire. The Prometheus's main guns roared to life, hurling shells at a fraction of the speed of light towards the Ascendancy's command ship. The enemy vessel's shields flared and died under the onslaught, and the ship broke apart, spilling debris and bodies into the void. As the battle raged around them, Michael and Varys led a strike team in a daring assault on the Ascendancy's base. They fought their way through the twisting corridors, cutting down fanatic warriors with blasts of plasma fire and the sharp edges of Saurian claws. Finally they reached the heart of the base, a vast chamber housing the ancient precursor weapon, and there, standing before the pulsing core of the machine, was a figure Michael had never expected to see again. Alexander, he whispered, his voice cracking with shock and grief. His brother turned to face him, his eyes blazing with madness. Hello, Michael, he said, his voice cold and cruel. I'm surprised you made it this far. Michael shook his head, struggling to comprehend what he was seeing. How? We thought you were dead. What happened to you? Alexander laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. I was reborn, brother. 
The Ascendancy showed me the truth. The only way to bring order to this chaotic galaxy is through conquest, through the subjugation of all lesser races. Ferris snarled, his scales rippling with anger. You're insane. This ends now. Alexander's hand drifted towards the control panel of the precursor weapon. No, Saurian. This is only the beginning. With this machine, I will burn your fleets from the sky and bring the galaxy to its knees. Michael stepped forward, his weapon lowered. Please, Alexander, don't do this. It's not too late to stop this madness. But his brother only shook his head, his finger hovering over the activation switch. I'm sorry, Michael, but you've left me no choice. Time seemed to slow as Alexander's hand descended towards the panel. Michael raised his weapon, tears streaming down his face as he sighted on his brother's chest. The shot rang out, echoing through the chamber. Alexander staggered back, a look of shock and betrayal on his face as he collapsed to the floor. Michael rushed to his side, cradling his brother's head in his lap. I'm sorry, he whispered over and over again. I'm so sorry. Alexander coughed, blood bubbling from his lips. It's okay, Michael, he rasped. You did what you had to do, what I couldn't. As the light faded from his brother's eyes, Michael let out a howl of anguish, his grief echoing through the chamber. Havaris placed a clawed hand on his shoulder, his expression grim. It's over, he said softly. The weapon is destroyed. The ascendancy is finished. But even as the galaxy celebrated their victory, the cracks in the human-saurian alliance began to show. Old grudges and animosities, buried in the face of a common enemy, began to resurface. On the Saurian homeworld, Varys was hailed as a hero, the saviour of his race. But in the quiet moments when the cheering crowds had dispersed, he found himself haunted by the things he had seen and done. The realisation that his people's dominance was no longer assured, that they would have to learn to live in a galaxy where they were no longer the undisputed masters. And on Earth, Michael retreated into seclusion, the weight of his brother's death and the choices he had made crushing his spirit. He had saved countless lives, but the price he had paid, the peace of his soul he had sacrificed, left him hollow and broken. The galaxy had been saved, but the scars of the war would linger for generations. The humans, once the upstarts and newcomers, were now a force to be reckoned with, their power and influence undeniable. But the price of that power paid in blood and grief, would haunt them forever. As the council races began the long, slow process of rebuilding, one thing was clear. The galaxy would never be the same again. The old order had been shattered, and in its place something new and unpredictable was rising. And at the centre of it all, the humans and the Saurians, once bitter enemies, now stood poised on the brink of a new era, an era of cooperation and understanding, or one of renewed conflict and bloodshed. Only time would tell which path they would choose. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.